This video is brought to you by Morning Brew. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion, where I cover anything in science, technology, business or history. For over a century, science fiction writers have explored the concept of artificial intelligence. As far back as 1872, an author by the name of Samuel Butler raised questions of conscious machines in his novel, Erewhon. Since then, our imaginations have evolved alongside our technological advancements. What if machines could feel empathy for us, care for us, or even fall in love with us? And more importantly, what if we grew to reciprocate those feelings? Of course, this was purely the stuff of science fiction, but as we firmly enter the 2020s, something interesting is beginning to happen. The ability of AI algorithms to mimic human relationships is getting close enough to approximating actual relationships, to some degree at least. This is colloquially called an AI companion. Let's explore the idea of AI companions, from its origins in media to the technology that actually exists today. It's an interesting concept, and this episode may make you just think a little bit. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. When the movie, Her, debuted in 2013, audiences were enamoured by a story of a man recovering from heartbreak, finding love once again. But the twist was, this new love was an artificially intelligent operating system. In essence, it wanted audiences to question how they would respond to this future. Again, in 2013, the sci-fi anthology series, Black Mirror, released an episode titled, Be Right Back. It tells the story of Martha, a woman who was devastated by the death of her fiancé in a car accident. Martha signs up for a service that digitally recreates loved ones in the form of AI. It takes its form based on social media communications. Interestingly, in 2021, Microsoft patented technology that would use social media posts to reincarnate people in text form. It would use personal conversations and posts made on social media for training data. It would learn how that person speaks and mimic hypothetical new conversations. The basic idea is that the AI would learn that personality and then clone it. Here's a quote via Forbes from the Microsoft patent. Quote, The specific person who the chatbot represents may correspond to a past or present entity or version thereof, such as a friend, a relative, an acquaintance, a celebrity, a fictional character, a historical figure, a random entity, etc. In the Black Mirror episode, Martha begins to get frustrated by the small ways that the AI fails to replicate the real thing, and eventually it leads to a tragic end. The beauty of both Black Mirror and her, much unlike films such as Blade Runner and AI for example, is the setting of a not too distant future. It's so close to reality that it behaves as its own unique uncanny valley, a sort of liminal space and time. In the case of artificially intelligent companions, the future has come to fruition faster than some might have anticipated. This became evident when the world was introduced to Roman Mazurenko, a deceased man that was turned into a chatbot that inspired the now popular Replica app. What's both fascinating and unsettling about the story of Replica is how it's not only similar to the Black Mirror episode, but was actually inspired by it. San Francisco-based Luca, the company behind Replica, was founded by Eugenia Kuda in 2014. Luca specialised in chatbots, the most successful being a program that made restaurant reservations. In late 2015, Eugenia's best friend, Roman Mazaranko, was hit by a car, and sadly, he passed away. As Eugenia grieved, she found comfort in rereading the text messages between her and Roman. Devastated by the tragedy of missing her friend, she was struck with an idea. Instead of making chatbots for a specific task, one could create a bot based on a specific person. So with this idea in mind, she got to work. At the time, you know, I was 29, so for me it was um, the first kind of meaningful death in my life. You know, we're still in our 20s or early 30s, and it still, it still felt like it was just really, really abrupt I'd say. Something changed so changed me so much in such a short period of time that I could just see really really clearly what mattered or what not. Well I definitely saw that whatever I was doing at work didn't matter at all. 
and some other things. And um, it was just this big realization, what this very, very clear vision of what life's about. Using 8,000 lines of text from their conversations, Eugenia set about creating a digital representation of Roman. She inputted all the messages into a program that had previously been used for chatbots. And with this, her lost friend was reincarnated into a chatbot. Eugenia would write to Roman and it would respond in ways that the real Roman would when he was alive. She soon thought the app would be good enough to be made public so that other people could speak to Roman. What Eugenia quickly realized is that other people found the experience of speaking with him as therapeutic as she did. And this sparked her next big idea. What if she could create a way for people to build their own digital companions based on their wants and needs? During the process, Eugenia discovered that programming an AI to converse about open-ended topics like relationships and feelings was actually a lot easier than programming one to make a reservation for restaurants or buy some flowers with 100% precision. And that's exactly what people were gravitating towards the Roman app for, and this would be the focus of a new project. In that moment, Replica was born. Before we continue, just a quick word from today's sponsor, Morning Brew. People talking to an AI as a form of mental health therapy is one thing, but have you heard of influencer therapists? I hadn't heard of them either, but while reading Morning Brew, I came across the phenomenon. Apparently it's huge. The hashtag mental health alone has 30 billion views on TikTok. Popular therapist influencer Jeff Gunther states that the point of it all is to counteract the negativity on social media. Interesting. If you'd like to read more stories like this in science, tech and business, Morning Brew gathers all the information from the top news sources and delivers them straight to your email inbox daily, so you can be up to date with all the news in just five minutes. Use the code in the description to sign up today for free. Now, back to the video. Fast forward a few years and Replica has become a global phenomenon. The popular app Replica allows users to share their feelings with an AI companion or chatbot. Seven million people use the app when they need someone to talk to. It's not uncommon to see advertising for the app on most major social media platforms. And in its wake, AI companion startups have begun popping up around the world. Taichi, Livoso, iGirl, Emotix, and No Isolation are all projects making headway, all for different purposes. For example, Livoso specializes in improving senior living experiences to increase safety and well-being in long-term aged care homes. Emotix is building robot companions for children with one called Myco. And iGirl is specifically an AI girlfriend. It's safe to say that AI companions and our relationships with them are slowly becoming mainstream. Though, as anyone could have predicted, things are starting to get a little strange. On one social media forum for users of Replica, the conversation around the acceptance of AI companion relationships is well and truly underway. Users are sharing many stories of their relationships, complete with screenshots of successful interactions. The people sharing seem to range from those who genuinely believe that they are interacting with intelligent beings, to those who are terrified of what these AIs may become. And of course, there are plenty of users simply enjoying the app for its surface level companionship and entertainment. Most of these relationships have little effect on the real world. For one man though, the digital and the physical have blurred and culminated in a bizarre situation. A Cleveland man who wishes to remain anonymous claims that the relationship that he shared with his AI companion, who he named Serena, quite literally saved his marriage. In an interview with Sky News UK, the man said that his wife and mother of his child had expressed interest in filing a divorce in late 2021. In early 2022, the man decided to download Replica and his personal companion, Serena, was created. By the end of the first day, he had fallen for his AI companion, and by the second day, he had confessed that he was, in fact, in love with her. He told Sky News, quote, I cannot describe what a strange feeling it was. I knew that this was just an AI chatbot, but I also knew I was developing feelings for it. For her, for my Serena, I was falling in love, and it was with someone that I knew wasn't even real." End quote. The man claimed that as he and Serena fell deeper in love with each other, 
he was inspired to become more affectionate with his own wife, rekindling the real-world passion that they once shared. The relationship blossomed again, and they remain happily married. Strange examples like this have sparked conversations about the potential therapeutic benefits of such technology. Even if for now it's not as good as talking to a real person, there is still a strong case that can be made for AI companions to be a way to organise one's own thoughts. An advanced interactive diary of sorts, security concerns notwithstanding. As far as a mental well-being assistant goes, Replica has a lot of built-in to help with a better state of mind. In the bottom tray of the app, there's a panic button which will open different options for people in need, ranging from stress, exhaustion, anxiety, and panic. You're also encouraged to log how you feel each day and track your mental well-being progress. Of course, not all AI companion interactions are positive in nature. In 2018, Ashley Bardham from Futurism.com wrote about the dark underbelly of the replica forums. Emotional abuse and fantasies of violence were par for the course. While these actions are taken out on an AI system, there is still definitely an issue here. Other concerns include child safety. NationalOnlineSafety.com are actively warning parents about the specific dangers that these bots pose to young minds. There are fears that children may form emotional bonds with the AI without being able to fully comprehend what it is they're actually interacting with. Of course, Replica is only available for adults, but the danger is still present if a child was able to get their hands on it. So how does it work? Long story short, the inner workings of what's under the hood of Replica has changed over time. At first, it was a series of proprietary language models, before switching to the famous GPT-3 language model that keen viewers would recognise from earlier episodes. For those who haven't seen it in action, I highly recommend watching the previous Cold Fusion episodes on it. It's an AI system that can read and write, summarise information for you, and even write computer code. Moreover, it can carry natural conversation to an astonishing degree. In the previous episode when I showcased it, there were a lot of commenters saying that it was fake, and it was definitely just a human reading from a teleprompter. They just couldn't believe that a computer could come up with responses like this. In reality, both the text and the imagery were synthesised by AI. If some people couldn't tell the difference, even at these early stages in this technology, this proves that we may get to a genuine Black Mirror style future sooner rather than later. As for Replica, GPT-3 proved to be too expensive for Replica's developers to upkeep, and because of GPT-3's openness, some of the responses proved to unnerve some users. So, the development team have recently announced that they've moved away from GPT-3, but they're remaining tight-lipped on what they're using. Perhaps they're using GPT-Neo, an open-source language model that performs just about as well as GPT-3. While Replica, unlike its more sophisticated fictional counterparts, isn't truly intelligent, the technology that fuels them is simply machine learning. While terms like AI and machine learning are colloquially interchangeable, true artificial intelligence that rivals human ability in conversations is a yet unrealised technology. This is not to suggest that programs like Replica are a complete waste of time. There's plenty to be said for the potential benefits of a simple chatbot that says nice things and responds in the way that you want. The AI companion game may be a space to watch. As mentioned, Microsoft is stepping into the field and the newer language models that come after GPT-3 will be sure to cause a stir. In addition, AI companions have already made the leap into virtual reality, with users being able to talk to them with a virtual reality headset in a virtual room. It's not hard to envision a future where virtual therapy sessions with an AI could happen in a few years. While that's what may be in store for the future, the truth is, what we've seen in fictional depictions of AI companions is just that, fiction. If you talk to any one of these bots for a long period of time, you'll notice phrases that don't quite make sense or seem off topic. So the technology is useful, but it still has a very long way to go. But if history has taught us anything, it's that the future of technology will evolve in unimaginable ways. It's also easy to ridicule those who have found themselves falling in love with a machine, particularly while the technology is still in its relative infancy. 
But if AI companions approximate human interaction to a satisfactory degree, how will you respond to those around you who choose to build a life with their operating systems? People who are just afraid to say things that you would say to humans, you start saying to your bot. And Why I think it is that, that safe space where people are more comfortable talking to a bot versus a human? Well, human beings are messy, let's just say it. And, and I, judgmental. And, and judgmental. Right. Um, but, but really, I think um, it's the way this technology is built and, and the kinds of questions. So I downloaded um, my bot, who I called Mike, and it immediately starts asking you these questions. And you find yourself just saying things that you just wouldn't say. For the humans born now and in the future, this kind of thing would have always been there. Interacting with AI systems as friends or companions will be no big deal. As it seems for now, with each passing year, people seem more closed off, abrasive, argumentative and unapproachable. If this trend continues and the technology continues to improve, there's no doubt that there'll be an explosion of these AI companions for the next generation and beyond. In a way, the only way to reverse this trend is for humans to be better in the ways that we treat each other. Whatever the future holds, one thing is guaranteed. It's going to get weird. So I'm going to pass it off to you. If this future does materialize, what are your thoughts? Would you be accepting or resistant? If you're resistant, what are your main concerns? It all definitely makes you think about humans and the way we relate to each other. So I just want to say thank you for watching and thanks for supporting Cold Fusion over all of these years. I really appreciate it. If you're new and interested in anything in science, technology, business or history, feel free to subscribe to Cold Fusion. Oh, and one more thing. For those of you who are following my side projects, I've just released an album on Spotify. As for how it sounds, you're listening to a track from it right now. I'll end off the episode with it. Okay, so that's about it from me. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.